freshman back who ripped off a great run on the first play of the game on offense for Stetson, but has been quiet ever since he picks up around two. He's one of the conference's leading rushers. Now, he, he Jareem uh, Westcott of Jacksonville, by the way, uh, was, was their number one uh, running back, and Leary comes in as a freshman and was backing him up. Westcott injury, inj injury issues. He's not even playing today, and Leary's done a heck of a job of filling in either as Westcott's backup or being the main guy. Quick completion to Jeremiah Nails on an out route on the left side. And there's brings up another third down for Stetson. They converted a third and short. Uh, excuse me, no, first third down of the drive. I stand corrected. Ball down to the 28-yard line. Stetson needs to get it to the 23. It's an important play right now for both sides. Stetson's got to prove that once they get in, you know, closer to the goal line, they've got to be able to make a play. Uh, JU's got to continue to be able to play defensively, stop them in this area. Filippo rifles one behind his intended target, Beckett incomplete. And Lewis got a hand in there, but Filippo with a more accurate throw may have had it. Well, I, I hate to keep saying it, but I, I thought that was pass interference. It looked to me like uh, that he was grabbed before the ball got there, but uh, no call, and again, I like to officials keep the flag in your pocket. We don't need a, a flag parade today and have a ball game that goes seven hours. Offense staying on the field for this fourth down and five. Stetson, eight for 14 on the year on fourth downs. 7.45 left to play in the second quarter, 3-3 three, three ball game. Big play here, DiFilippo throws it deep, back shoulder pass caught by by Lane down inside the 10-yard line and a first down for Stetson through the air. I, I'm going I'm to defend the JU defense in this situation. That's an almost impossible play to stop if the offense executes. Uh, you know, a good throw, the back shoulder thing, the receiver's running, you've got him covered, he stops, spins, boom, ball's there. There's really not much you can do. Uh, offense has to execute well, and that's exactly what they did on that fourth down play. Gain of 19 through the air on a fourth and five. Back in the red zone, Stetson, Filippo, And he sails one past everyone. And out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. Intended target on the play, Becker, who has been playing primarily in place of Steven Burdett, who we saw targeted on that first drive. He's been on the bench with his left ankle on ice ever since. So... The Stetson, you yeah. talked about the depth at receiver being tested a little bit here today. They'll run the ball with Leary, and Leary submarines his way down near the five. They'll mark him down at the six, a gain of just three and a third down and goal. You know, the truth is on that pass play, I don't know that there was an intended receiver. That was a, a good quarterback throwing it away, knowing that he didn't have anything uh, working for him. Uh, a nice little run there. Third and goal, can the Jacksonville defense – hold again in the red zone. They have forced two field goal tries when Stetson has been in the red zone twice prior today. Well, up to this point, the JU defensive coaching staff has got to be thrilled to death. Filippo, time, now pressure, just floats it to the back corner, out of bounds and complete. And a great play by the Jacksonville defensive again. Ethan Hall pressuring Filippo. good coverage on the back end, and another field goal attempt for Stetson in the red zone. I want to tell you what, the Stetson receivers were covered uh, from the tight end to the wide receivers. Jacksonville's defense did a heck of a job then. And, and Flippo, as I'll call him from now on, uh, had nobody to throw to. 23-yard try for Johnny Messina, who's one for two today, made a 19-yarder, missed a 37-yarder to the right. This one right up the middle. Low snap, dug out, and the chip shot. Finds its way through the uprights, and Stetson has retaken the lead with 6.19 to play in the second quarter. 6-3 Hatters and a field goal fest here in this first half, David. Who thought this would be a field goal fest? We, we know that, that Bidwick has, has done well kicking for JU this season. Uh, we knew Stetson didn't have a particularly strong kicking game. Uh, both of them are capable of scoring touchdowns, and it's 6-3. to three. You know what? It's... It, it's 6-3, to three, and it's the bottom of the seventh. Uh, <laughs> sounds like a World Series game. Yeah. Uh, but here we are more than halfway through the second quarter, and these two offenses, which can put points on the board, particularly Stetson, 
Uh, Stetson was leading, leading the, the PFL and scoring per game, 39 points. Yeah, I mean, you know, so they can put it up, and that's what 10 points last week in that rainstorm, wind, whatever they were up in Valpo. Uh, and here they, the JU defense has answered the call. Uh, Stetson offense has got to figure a way to make some of those third down plays. Uh, and JU just, they just got to get, they got to get their offense going. And and, and, yep. and that probably means against a, a reasonably good defense that the Turners will have to throw the ball. Brady Lawrence, the kickoff specialist for Stetson, to send it deep to B.J. Bird. He boots it. Bird up to receive it at his own 10. And he Ooh. is leveled at the 25-yard line and driven out of bounds. And a flag comes flying in at the late at the end of this one, right on that Stetson sideline where both parties were coming together. I think it may be a late hit. I mean, they stood B.J. up. He wasn't going to go anywhere. And then there was two guys there, and then a third guy came flying in and really drilled him. You know, up here it's hard to tell when the whistle blew, but uh, – well, officials are looking to the Stetson sideline, so perhaps it is on Jacksonville. Yeah, it looks like it absolutely is. I I don't can't imagine what they did, uh, and I thought it might be a late hit, but I was wrong on that. Know, a personal foul on a Dolphin, and that moves the ball back inside the 20-yard line, and it will rest in between the 12 and the 13 where this drive will start with 6.13 to play in the opening half. Jacksonville finding themselves down by three on the scoreboard again, 6-3 Hatters. I have no idea what the infraction was. You know, I'll, it, maybe it was something that a Dolphin said. They were right there on the Stetson sideline. You think he said something the official heard or I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that didn't help a, a lick. For Yeah, there was nothing well, it obvious. Helped, it helped Stetson. Certainly did. didn't help uh, JU. A handoff up the middle on first down and a solid gain for Garnett Nicholas. He carries it out across the 15-yard line to the 17, a pickup of around five on first. Well, it's pretty clear that time Stetson thought J.E. was going to run something wide because they had spread their defense a little more than usual. Uh, and and J.E. took advantage of it. Whether they changed the play at the line of scrimmage, I don't know. Second and five, Turner back to throw. He looks deep down the middle, got a man, but he misses him. B.J. Bird had a step on everyone in the secondary, but Turner a little too much air under that one in an incompletion. You know, Stetson that time had a 10-man box. And that's exactly when you want to throw. Right, they, 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 but they were just daring uh, Jacksonville to throw the ball, and Bird got free. Yep, it was the perfect play call. Right, and, and, and an accurate pass, and that is a Big play touchdown. Uh, he over, uh, overthrew him, but that's the pass that Turner has made a lot more this year than he made last year. But that's a that's a tough miss right there. All right, still it's it's designed to stop the run. He's looking to throw again, and a lot of dancing for Turner. Flushed, throws, and just throws it away. And he dropped back and didn't look comfortable from the get go on that one. And after a Good first play of the drive to net five yards. Jacksonville goes three and out, and here comes the punting unit, which we have seen four times today now for the Dolphin offense. A great catch on that play by one of the JU coaches. I can't identify him. It was a one-handed catch, a one-arm catch. Uh, it was catch. Uh, offensive line coach Tom Seamy. Well, he, did you see him? He just yeah, reached no, up with one paw and pulled it in. Best catch of the day by either team. Yeah, maybe uh, Seamy ought to be coaching the receivers. <laughs> <laughs> he can show the technique. Here is Stump to punt for the third time today. Whistles, and a flag comes down. Perhaps a del – no, no delay of game. There's still four on the play clock. And a false start on Jacksonville. And it's starting to get to that point, David, over the last several weeks, this Jacksonville team has just not helped themselves in any way. The offense hasn't been crisp, but – uh, too many penalties, too many turnovers. No turnovers today for the Jacksonville offense, but quite a few penalties already hurting this Dolphin attack, and now Stump is standing his own end zone. If I, were, if I were Stetson, I would go for the block here. They don't punt it well. If nothing else, make him rush it and get off a uh, weak punt. He goes down. I don't see a flag. Yeah, Stump down, no flag down, and a decent punt with no return. He sends it out of bounds into the Stetson bench at the 48-yard line, and now a flag comes in after the play. Perhaps 
Jacksonville taking offense to the contact that was made that did not lead to an earlier flag, and there were a couple of green jerseys mixing it up with white jerseys. I'm trying to identify. Uh, it looks like Keyshawn Douglas and Crandall Maines were involved in that. Well, from for my vantage point, Keyshawn Douglas stopped, turned around, and, and went up to the Stetson player. So, uh, you know, it, it looked like he might have deserved it. I don't know what he said and how much he touched him. But, uh, you know, you're in a ball game with a team that's favored to beat you. That's the kind of stuff you're talking right. about. Yep. You shoot yourself in the foot. You got to have the poise not to do that. Coach uh, Shields talked about it this week in our in our weekly podcast. He said well, we're our own worst enemy right now. I well, mean, we're we're the ones that are not giving ourselves a chance to win. And it's you know at this point in the season is when you don't expect to see the silly penalties and you don't ex- you know things are supposed to be crisper. Right. You're in the second half of the season. Of the season. Right. Uh, things are supposed to be kind of automatic by now. You've gone through them, uh, but. That penalty gives Stetson the ball at midfield. Uh, and eventually, you've got to think Stetson's offense, which has been so good this season, is going to break through and not have to settle for, for a field goal. How many times can JU's defense be asked to did they, s- step up and make plays uh, at, 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 in difficult situations? Did they not accept the penalty because the ball went out of bounds at the, f- ja- at the Stetson 48-yard line, and it didn't move up any, which is a little – Oh, offsetting penalties. Okay, I only saw the first one, and I didn't see the referee indicate the second one, so I apologize for that. I didn't and see it either. And Maybe the Stetson guy said something. Yeah, there must have been. And then Douglas responded. Both, both sides guilty. Yeah, I, I didn't, you know, obviously we can't hear what's going on. But that in itself is foolish on, on Douglas. If the other guy's got a creative personal foul, take yeah, advantage yeah, just of it. Just let him go. Second down and seven. A short throw and a catch made by Gelati, his second one of the game. And another short pick up to the 46-yard line. Sets up a third down and four. I I tend to give JU's defense credit for stopping Stetson offense more than saying Stetson's offense just isn't clicking. The defense is really – There's not much there. I mean, there's a lot of check downs, a lot of short passes. Yeah, and, and, you know, and on some of the completions and so forth, there's been good coverage. DeFilippo underneath again, caught by Becker. Depending on the spot, he appears to have just enough for the first down, but he was tackled immediately by Ethan Hall, and he got exactly the yardage he needed to move the chains. Well, you know, that was sort of a good play on both teams because they got the first – Stetson got the first down, good throw by Lippo, good catch and all that, but a good open field tackle. That's a play that I'll bet Stetson's used this year and going for 30 or 40 yards. But one guy there, he makes the open field tackle. Very sure tackling here yeah, today. Yeah, really for both sides. Yep. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm impressed with JU's defense today. Leary with a big cutback and a lane up the middle. And he carries it all the way down to the 25 yard line. Biggest run of the day for the freshman Jalen Leary and a rare big gainer here for either team on offense in the first half. Is it possible to rewind the tape? <laughs> no sooner than I'm so proud of the JU defense. Uh, then we see that. But. Here's Tempo, and Filippo with a keeper off left end. He carries it down inside the 15. Close to another first down for Filippo. He gains 11 and does move the chains. Well, let me say this. Up until these last two runs, JU's defense has been very, very good, and this is where they've been their best. When when Stetson gets to close to that yep. goal line, uh, JU has stepped up and not allowed them to get it in. Ball all the way down to the 11-yard line. That was actually a gain of 14 for DiFilippo on the keeper. Looking to throw. Time. Back of the end zone. And that was a dangerous throw there. Well, he threw it it away, but he probably didn't throw it far enough away because Torrey Parker was sitting right in front of that, and I'm sure his eyes got wide as saucers watching that track near him. Yeah, I'm not sure you wouldn't throw a – Throw it into the field beyond. Well, I'm not sure you wouldn't get an illegal uh, ground. I'm not sure. That is true. I mean. Because there was nobody there. I mean, he clearly didn't throw it to anybody, and he was clearly in the pocket. Yep. And, um, you know, I don't know what uh, illegal grounding exactly is, but that looked like it to me. By the letter of the law, might have been. DiFilippo, RPO, into the flat. And a nice open field tackle by Mo Flournoy bringing down. Gelati, after another short gain, he brings it down to the five, maybe the four-yard line, a pickup of about six. It sets up another third down. Open field tackling has not been a strength for JU this year, 
and we have seen some spectacular open field open field tackling today. I don't uh, maybe they worked on that drill all week, but uh, I think that's been the key to keeping Stetson from having some big plays. Third down and three. Di Filippo under pressure, throws to the end zone, broken up. Flournoy got a mid in there and knocked it out of the hands of Lane. Another excellent play by the junior corner who had the tackle a moment ago, and Stetson forced to settle for a field goal try again. Give Fortnoy all the credit there. Great defensive coverage, and the timing just gets a hand in to keep Stetson from getting six. Fortnoy deserves a, a star and attaboy and all those kind of things. Uh, and he's been involved in several good plays for JU's defense. There's another field goal try for Johnny Messina. High snap, put down the kick, hooked just inside the left upright, and a 21-yard field goal good. Now Messina's the one that's got to complain about the fact that he ended up on the ground with no call, but maybe everything evens up now as both sides have had a guy go down with no laundry to show for it. Third made field goal of the day for Johnny Messina, and the lead extends to the largest of the afternoon for Stetson. Now a six-point advantage, 9-3 to three with 224 left in the opening half. As a former kicker, you didn't see any acting by either one of those kickers <laughs> going down. <laughs> Let me tell you, David, every time somebody <laughs> comes within a whisper of you, there's acting you by the kickers. Well, well, there was one game in college where I think I fell down on eight punts, <laughs> and I might have been touched on one of them. It got to the point where guys were trying to hold me up and calling me every word in the book. Yeah, I did. But I was the best offense. I got a r one roughing the punter penalty that got us an automatic first down, and we really couldn't generate much more. If if you couldn't tell by the eight times we punted in that game, <laughs> we didn't get a whole lot going on offense. Apparently. That you know, if, if nothing changes in these last two minutes and 24 seconds, Stetson's going to go into halftime leading 9-3. to three. And to be honest with you, I think the happier locker room is going to be J.U. Mm -hmm. I think Stetson is going to be in the locker room, even with the lead. Saying missed going, opportunities. What in the world are we doing? Come on, guys. And I think J.U. is going to be in the locker room going, great playing, guys. Just keep us close. And we'll, you know, Turner will bust one and, and we'll win this game. Strange game. Uh, fair catch called by Jordan Young Humphrey in Jacksonville starts at its own 25 with 2.23 left to play in the first half. And again, we're in a situation, Jacksonville's one touchdown away from leading this game. Right, and, you know, we, we've seen some odd games. You know, we'll do the setup based on how the teams have performed. We're looking at all the numbers, and we're saying you can expect this, this, or this. And games turn out to be exactly the opposite. And, and this is certainly one. I, w I might have expected 29-23 at halftime of this game because I know JU's offense, while it hasn't been doing well lately, can be very good. But I didn't expect defense to slow Stetson down at all with their offense. They've been good. Uh, this is three out of the last four weeks that this Jacksonville defense has done some pretty impressive things. The goal line stands against Moorhead State, yep. held Butler in check largely for that game, and Turner taking off on first down. Turner to the edge, Turner down the sideline, and he scoots out of bounds after crossing the 40. A first down run for Calvin Turner Jr. on this, the sixth drive of the first half for Jacksonville, and it's the second best starting position for the Dolphins today, its own 29 yard line. Well, again, I, I, that's what we've seen out of Calvin Turner and got spoiled expecting to see a lot of those, and we haven't seen a lot of those. Uh, that's the second one today that I think he's been able to to get, turn the corner, make some good running, do some good running. Here's a pitch and no gain. In fact, a loss for Garnett Nicholas, who they tried to get on the edge. He loses a yard back to the 39. Clock continuing to roll under two minutes to play in the opening half. 9-3 Stetson. Some people may say, why did Turner pitch that ball? Because the, there was a defender right on the pitch guy. Well, he pitched it because there was somebody ready to knock his block off and it would have been a bigger loss. Turner on a draw. Turner out across the 45, still on his feet, and he's lassoed down at the 44-yard line, a gain of five and a third down and six. Timeout called. I think it's Stetson that took the timeout. Well, Stetson thinks that uh, they can stop him here and then have, uh, you know, maybe a, a minute or slightly less uh, to score. And, uh do something they haven't done all day, get the ball in the end zone. It's a hatter timeout. Their first use this half. 
Third down and six for Jacksonville coming out of the break. Both teams with two timeouts left here in the opening half. 9-3, Stetson leads. Jacksonville has not led in this game. They managed to tie it up uh, really early in this second quarter on a 25-yard field goal by Zach Benwick. But the story has really been Stetson, the offense has certainly outperformed Jacksonville's, but when it comes to the red zone, they just can't seem to break through the glass ceiling that is the goal line. And they have settled for four field goal tries in the red zone today, going three for four in those attempts and lead by 6-9-3. Yeah, you know, the way I look at it is give the uh, the Dolphins defense 12 points. They have, you know, gotten made a 12-point difference so far uh, stopping them. And an interception on the other drive that didn't right. uh, result in points. Absolutely. They, they, they have played well. Now, here's an interesting, situa interesting situation. If you're JU, do you, do you make the, a serious effort to make a first down here by that? I mean, are, are you going to throw the ball, which is what most people would do in third and six? Uh, or, you know, are you just trying to get in position to punt and bury them deep? It's a Turner draw. And – Nope. And he gets next to nothing, maybe a yard out to the 45, and a whole host of hatters there to greet him. It Led by Colantino Andrews, but there was a bunch of white jerseys in on that stop, and Jacksonville forced to punt for the fifth time this half. And they have not punted it well. And look, uh, you know, again, I would, I would really put the rush on, uh, the punt block on, because, number one, the punters aren't, even if you don't block it, a bad punter has to rush it. Then maybe you get the shank. We've already seen one of those today. Uh, you know, or just another bad punt. Uh, so if I'm Stetson, I'm not worried about the return. I'd be inclined in a situation like this to put all 11 guys on the line of scrimmage and just go for it. Stetson used its second timeout. We'll have one remaining with a minute 16 to play in the second quarter, leading by six. And Derek Stumpf out to punt again for the Jacksonville Dolphins, the freshman punter. Remember, we've seen there was a little bit of a rush on that last one, and Stumpf ended up on the ground thinking that he got rushed, led to a disagreement of sorts between non-kickers on the field, uh, which led to offsetting personal foul penalties. So keep an eye on that one here. Well, Stetson does have a guy back, uh, and they've got a couple of guys back at off the line of scrimmage. So they're going for a return. Uh, <laughs> and a fair catch called for and made inside the 20-yard line around the 18 by Jalen Johnson. And uh, Derek Stumpf, he definitely tried to sell that one as he went spiraling backward as a rusher ran behind him. Did a backflip. I think his old man may have bumped into him <laughs> or touched him, but I don't believe Stump would make would be knocked backwards and do a whole flip under normal circumstances. He's probably a little stronger than that, but uh, he's putting on his acting hat today. Yes. So far, nobody's bought it. Minute nine left. Stetson on offense. Steve Filippo keeps it off left side, and he pushes his way forward to around the 25-yard line. Cedric Wilcox makes the tackle, and they'll mark it just past the 25, a gain of about six. A little surprised by that. Only a minute to go. And I thought they this would they can throw it. We know they're effective throwing, and I thought they would certainly try to sling it in the air here. But uh, 43 seconds and counting left in the second quarter. DiFilippo will throw this time. Throws it deep down the left sideline. Wilcox knocks it away from Lane incomplete. Well, again, we point out Wilcox has been out. Back in the game, we've seen him make at least two. Uh, two big plays on defense today. He's so. got his left hand wrapped up, broke it in practice about three weeks ago. Still managed to come down with an interception earlier this game, and there another nice play in pass protection. He's a pass rushing linebacker end hybrid. He could do a little bit of both, and he's showing it today. Yeah, he had his right hand up and, and tipped that ball away then. Uh, I now understand why he didn't have his left hand up. Leary dragging men out near the 30-yard line. Looks like it's enough for a first down. It is. Clock stops momentarily with 29 seconds left. Well, you'd like to be in the, in, in the head of Coach Roger Hughes and try to figure out exactly what he's hoping to accomplish now just to end the half. I guess you hope you break one maybe. Leary, a short gain. A gain of about four out to the 34. And that very well could be the final play 
of the first half. Five uh, seconds left, both teams. Neither team really showing any sign of getting to the line of scrimmage, and the clock does indeed expire. A low scoring first half dominated by defense and field goals. Stetson with three field goals. The Jacksonville's one. Dolphins winning the turnover battle thus far today. Lone interception, lone turnover, leading to Jacksonville's three points. 9-3, Stetson over Jacksonville at the conclusion of one here at DB Milne Field. We'll be back with second half action after this.
that's just... Welcome back to Jacksonville. D.B. Milne Field getting ready for the start of the second half between Stetson and the Dolphins of Jacksonville University. A rivalry game here in the Pioneer Football League, and it's been a rough and tumble one here thus far. A lot of defense winning the day, whether it's Jacksonville holding Stetson to field goal tries in the red zone or the Stetson defense just limiting the Jacksonville offense in general, David. It's been a day defined by the defense. Yeah, but if you look at – yeah, you're right. You look at the stats, though, and, and Stetson is dominating. Uh, 205 yards in, in total offense, 86 for JU. Uh, Stetson has run the ball 15 times for 113 yards. JU, known for its running, 28 for 86. Uh, but JU's defense in the red zone has stepped up, forced turnovers, and that's why it's 9-3 to three Stetson. A Justin Curtis on the return, and Stetson starts – the second half on offense with the ball just shy of the 30-yard line. That offense, as you mentioned for Stetson, has racked up yards. Just doesn't have the points to reflect the amount of yardage that they have gained, and that's because the Stetson offense went into the red zone four times in the first half and had to settle for four field goal tries, making three of those four. How will Stetson's offense change? What, what do they make at halftime? Well, look at them now. They've got three, three wide outs. We didn't see much of that in the first half. So they're going to try to spread it out. They swing it out into the flat, and nothing doing for Curtis, who is tackled immediately. Kaysan Wakely knifes in to make the stop for a loss. Well, over, over his career, we've called his name a lot. Hey, just a very, very good football player. Uh, I guess the bigger schools thought he was a little too small, uh, maybe a step too slow. I, I don't know why uh, he couldn't have had his pick of some schools, but uh, Jay was glad that he came here. Good football player. He loses four yards on the play. Second and 14, a handoff, and Leary is stopped for a loss by Joel Morris. And the Jacksonville defense inspired to start the second half. No gain on the play for Stetson, third down and 14. Well, you know, Joe, Mor Joe Morris is a guy we hadn't heard much from this year. Uh, he's listed on, on the second team, but he, he gets a lot of snaps. Uh, he's playing for... He's on uh, Douglas, by the way, who had that personal foul. I don't know whether they're punishing Douglas not playing him or just that was Morris's time to be on the field. Man in motion, DiFilippo to throw. Steps up to his right, takes off, and is knocked out of bounds after a little to no gain. It's Wakely that goes in to help usher him out and a quick three and out for the Stetson offense to begin the second half. Yeah, race between Wakely and, and Flippo. Wakely's going to win that one, and he did. Both were going wide. Uh, Flippo hoping to make the turn on the corner and gain some yards, uh, and Wakely may have said, no, 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 none of that. He lost a yard on the play, so another tackle for loss for Kaysan Wakely. His seventh of the year, he leads the team. Uh, I believe this is the first punt. First punt of the game for Stetson. Let's see if their punter can. Matthias Gask kicking deep to B.J. Bird. And a wobbly spiral hits at the 45, takes a Stetson roll down to the 35, and dies at around the 32, where Jacksonville starts its first drive of the second half on offense. Still trailing only by six points. This offense one touchdown away from a lead for the first time today and will have some decent field position to start with. It's time for the offense to pick up the defense, which has done its part here today. Absolutely. And, you know, we've seen J.U., play so often, not just this year, but over the years, we, you almost expect a big play, a big run. We've seen so many of them, uh, just not this year. Turner dropping back on first down, and he is dropped for a loss. The blitzing linebacker, Hunter Stevens, grabbed Turner and dropped him for a big loss on first down. I'm not sure Turner is quite used to the speed that we just saw from the defender there. I mean, he's going wide. One guy's back there with him and takes him down for that big loss. Uh, I've seen Tur Turner's loss had more big losses today than I ever remember. Lost 10 on that carry, and it's second and 20 now for Jacksonville. And behind the chains early on this drive, 
Turner, option, left side. Turner keeps it. Turner with a lane. 35-40 into Stetson territory. He is gone. No flags on the field, and Jacksonville is a point after away from taking the lead. There's the explosive Calvin Turner Jr. for the first time this afternoon. Yeah, you can't expect anybody to have that play and do many of those, but we've seen Turner do a lot of big plays sort of like that, and uh, that time just before, just as soon as I get it out of my mouth that we haven't seen it. You're, you uh, you're a reverse jinx here today, aren't you? You're absolutely <laughs> right, and I've done it all day. But he, the speed to get to the corner, and then when he makes that turn, he gets on the sidelines. If you don't get up ahead of him, you're not going to catch him. And people take bad angles because I think his speed is so good. 78-yard touchdown run for Calvin Turner, Jr., his longest rush of the year. And the first touchdown scored by either team in the game gives Jacksonville its first lead of the afternoon. 10-9, Jacksonville over Stetson, 12 minutes to play in the third quarter here at D.B. Milne Field. We are, we are hey, in Sunbelt. We look forward. Commit to progress. Shine together. Elevate student-athletes to create a better world. Blaze the fast. Challenge more. Enlighten and innovate. For no matter the height of our obstacles, they will never block the sun. We can. Be students first. Rise. Connect. Impact. Every day. We are a sun built. We're playing a home game against Cleveland. I actually had an opportunity for a sack. Once I went to go wrap him up, his helmet kind of hit my pec just the right way, and, and, uh, and my pec tendon came off the bone. Following surgery therapy was very extensive. It was done through JOI, and they did a great job of getting me back to the point where I can compete on Sundays. There was such a, a high level of trust. JOI did an outstanding job of taking care of me, getting me back to where I need to be. Without them, I don't know if that would be the case. JOI, where the pros go. JOI has been wonderful for me. Uh, going back to my playing days, they kept me on the field as a player. Uh, and since I have moved on to the next phase of my life, they have helped me lead a very active lifestyle. Uh, I got to go, go, go. And JOI, without them, I wouldn't be where I am. I mean, my left shoulder is money because of JOI. I'm going to go where the best is, and me, I'm going to JOI. JOI, where the pros go. We are in hey, Sunbelt. We look forward. Commit to progress. Shine together. Elevate student athletes to create a better world. Blaze the fast. Challenge more. Enlighten and innovate. For no matter the height of our obstacles, they will never block the sun. We can. Be students first. Rise. Connect. Impact. Every day. We are a sun built. Jacksonville had 76 yards of offense all day until Calvin Turner Jr. goes around left end for 78 yards and his 11th rushing touchdown of the season. First of the day for either team. Jacksonville now leads 10-9. Uh, for the. Here's a pooch kickoff and a short return from an up back. That's linebacker Bryson Richards who carries it just across the 30. And Jacksonville setting the tone here to start the second half, a three and a half, three and out for us, David, and then a quick touchdown on the other end. Well, as a former kicker, I'm going to ask you to be the analyst. Why would you do the pooch kick? What, explain the thinking. Because of the long return earlier in the game. So that's why you're looking at it. Now the goal is to sit there and have them either fair catch it or you, know, you limit it to a two, three yard return and you feel like no one is going to score a touchdown there but they almost had a touchdown earlier, so okay, well, that's you, a thought process. Right, and then they get the ball at the 34, which is nine yards closer, so we'll see. Here's DeFilippo with a big hole, and he carries it all the way into Jacksonville territory before Lewis springs him to the ground. DeFilippo trying to do his best on the ground. The two quarterbacks are running the ball well here today. What was said at halftime? All of a sudden, this 9-3 defensive game, and we come out and early in the second half, Boom, big plays everywhere. First and 10 for Stetson, trailing for the first time today. Filippo hands off Leary on a cutback. Leary with a small lane that closes quickly to about the 46-yard line there. Crandall Mains brings him to the turf. 
you know, the Ming's had a play there you live for. Leary was making that cut back left. Somebody had hit him and sort of held him. And so basically he's just a st sitting target, and you get to drive right into him. Leary with another short pickup. He carries this one down inside the 45 to around the 43. He sets up third down and around four to go. And the Hatters have not been particularly good on third down. Especially in the red zone. Stetson, three of nine today on third down conversions. Well, you, they've been struggling, and they've got another one. And this is a pretty good chunk of real estate you got to cover on third down. Flags come flying to blow this one dead. And the Jacksonville defense is clapping. A rare penalty today, perhaps, on Stetson. False start on the Hatters, just a second time that Stetson has been called for a penalty today. They're one of the most penalized team, third most penalized team in the PFL coming into today's contest, averaging over seven penalties and over 61 yards in penalty yardage per game. But they've been clean here thus far today. Yeah, seven of 61, though, isn't bad overall. Uh, I mean, it's not good, but it's not particularly bad. Uh, Here's a throw down the middle, incomplete. Johnson popped Jordan. If he had tried to hang on to that one, he may not have been able to regardless. And Filippo just a little too far out in front. And the Jacksonville defense holds again. We saw Filippo uh, make that play earlier in the game to the guy, a deep crossing route. That time just not, not quite on target. But the Dolphins, they had a decent rush on. He didn't have a whole lot of time to, no. to set up and plant and do the things you'd love for your quarterback to do. Uh, so uh, – you make him throw it when he's not quite ready, and that's the result. Here's Gask to punt for the second time this half after not punting in the first. Short wobbler, and it takes another Stetson roll inside the 10 and dies at around the 6. It hit a Stetson player on the bounce, so perhaps this will move up a bit. And they will mark it at the 15-yard line instead. So a break for Jacksonville there. Right when it hit, it clipped a hatter in the leg. And Jacksonville with 10.05 to play in the third quarter. Leading for the first time today, 10-9. Gets the ball back on offense with a chance to add to the lead. Well, you know, I, I when, when the ball started bouncing forward, it looked like it was just going to die. And I sort of lost my concentration. But, Jay, you could have jumped on that ball. I don't know whether anybody, whether they realized it, whether they were close enough uh, to do it. But uh, once it's hit the receiving team. Yeah. Well, it ends up being moot as it moves back to the 15. Short gain on a dive play for Nicholas on first down. Yep, good point. Uh, he hasn't punted the ball well, particularly okay, but both his punts have had that kick forward. Yep, and they've maybe, got some had a rolls, haven't they? Maybe that's especially as a punter. There were tricks to trade where you could make a ball, right? Go right, go left, go forward. Yeah, I could never do those, but, uh, yeah, well, but, hey, but you I can mean, do that, but yes. Yeah, the, good, the really good punters, that it doesn't always work, of course. <laughs> but, but you uh, try it that way. Right, but they – Here's a B.J. Riley speeding down the sideline, slides to his stop after he crosses the 25-yard line. He's got a first down. Well, it's good to see – J.U. needs somebody else – that can run wide and has the speed to do it. Uh, and they really haven't had anybody but Calvin Turner this year. B.J. Riley is one of the guys who's capable and for whatever reason uh, hasn't been able to do it. I mean, Nicholas is your, your power guy. He can go wide occasionally. But uh, Speaking of Nicholas, he gets it on first down and another short gain for the sophomore be back. Totally different uh, second half. It so does far. have a different feel to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, just uh, things have changed a lot. And this Jacksonville team just looking for something to go its way. And so far the second half has done that. Here's where they've struggled over the last month. It's putting teams away when they had the lead, building on that lead. And we'll see if they can do anything here. Turner picking his way off left end, carries across the 30-yard line to around the 32 and that's a gain of five and a third down and three upcoming for Jacksonville. I think the Dolphins' offense is really Mr. Urban Riley. Uh, you know, up for, with the first two years, he was a consistently 
good running back, made some plays, injured a lot last year. This uh, And this year hasn't even dressed for most games. I don't, is he on the sidelines in uniform today or do you have any? He is not. He's uh, only dressed for one game this year. Yeah. And got a couple of carries, four for 14 yards. That's it. Third down, Jacksonville goes up the middle. And Nicholas tried to push his way for a first down. Looks like he's a yard short. Okay, now we've seen Ian Shields over the years go for it on fourth down a lot. I mean, even in, in this field position, we've seen him go for it. Well, that's, a, that's the kind of yep. confidence they have in their yep. running game. But here comes the punting unit. And I, I will say, David, and I've said this a couple times before, so we'll forget about the times I've said it and it hasn't happened, right. but watch for a fake potentially here because we have not seen any sort of trickery in the kicking game this season, and that has been a staple. Now the punter that usually runs the fake, Matt Clements, is not out there. It's Derek Stump, so perhaps we will just see a regular kick here again. Looked like some early movement on the line, but no flag and a short punt that hits an up man, and Jacksonville dives on it. Not exactly how you draw it up, but it's a first down for the Dolphins. Well, I, I guess that's one of the advantages uh, of that rugby-type kick. It's a low kick. It's on the ground, and it's bouncing around. And that time, one of the up guys who hit him in the back, he had turned around, I guess, to see if there was going to be a fair catch or what, what was going on, uh, and it hit him. You saw the uh, punt returner point like, oh, no. Uh, and then J.U. very quickly mount, bounced on it. Like I said, you wouldn't know it was the same two football teams this half than in the first half. The whole game has changed. The dynamics uh -huh. have changed. It's, it's, it's crazy. Connor Becker hit right on the backside, and Jacksonville with new life on this drive. And it's Garnett Nicholas on first down who carries for a gain of one. You know, I ran into Coach Shields pregame, David, and I said – now, what are you thinking today? He talked about how, you know, his team's still playing hard. Even They're not playing well, but they're playing hard. And he highlighted the fact that they haven't had any bounces go their way as of late. Well, that would classify as it's, a bounce going their way. That's a – Quite literally. That was a JU bounce. Uh, Stetson's defense on that play played like a team that was really mad. <laughs> Turner bottled up. Doubles back to the right side. Turner – Picks up a first down on the reverse. He was trying to go left, cuts it back right, and Mr. Improvisation strikes again. I, I want to know who was wearing jersey number two in the first half, and, and last week for that matter. And, and the week before and that? the week before that yeah. for that matter. That's the, that's the, you know, and you look at that play and you go, well, there's a lot of luck. Well, trust me, I've seen him his entire career, and that is what he has done up until this year time and time again. 12-yard gain and a first down for Turner there. Right. Looks like he's trapped. He makes the spin. He's hard to tackle, and he's got incredible good speed. Big hole up the middle. Nicholas, he's gone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. And that's what the success wide will do for you. Now your defense has got to be sort of leaning outward a little bit because you can't let Turner do that to us. We've got to get a step closer, and it softens up the middle a little bit. And Nicholas, they've had no luck up the middle. He takes it. Uh, Would you believe it, David Lamb? First touchdown of the year for Garnett Nicholas. A guy who scored it nine times on the ground last season. Right, as a freshman and, you know, an all-conference player. and I Honorable mean, mention All-American Yeah, a year I mean, ago. very good. I mean, the, 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 the hopes for him this year were sky high. And uh, extra point, by the way, is 17 Nine. You think Stetson right now is really pulling his hair out over the fact that three times it's knocking on the door and three times they settle for field goals. Where they're thinking it should be 21-17, it's 17-9, favored JU, and all of a sudden things are going right for the Dolphins like they haven't gone right maybe all, ye all year. Yeah. Well, neither <clears throat> team has scored a touchdown in the red zone today. Jacksonville has managed to do it from longer than 20 yards out distance. Meanwhile, Stetson 0 for 4 on red zone trips, resulting in touchdowns. And one team finding a way to score touchdowns and the other one settling for field goals, a big difference. Yeah, but JU's offense, it's its really not, hadn't been necessarily a red zone because they score. They can <coughs> score on those. From such distances. Distance plays, right. which you wouldn't think about with a running offense, but they are fully capable. Yeah, the, the big play is what they become known for at a big running play. Uh, I mean, how many times have we seen somebody scoring from 
20 yards, 30 yards, 78 yards. It's, it's pretty incredible. High short pooch kick caught on the sideline by Justin Curtis, who runs it out to the 31-yard line where Stetson starts again on offense. Hatters have not had any luck here in the second half. They punted on their only two possessions in which they truly had the ball, and then after forcing a punt from Jacksonville on that last possession, they fumble it on the, in, on the kick, an up-back hit on the backside. Jacksonville has turned two Stetson turnovers into 10 points here today, and actually the ball will start on offense at the 33 for the Hatters. Well, Stetson just has to take a deep breath, <clears throat> try to say, let's get it back together. Uh, we're still technically only one touchdown and a two-point conversion from tying this thing. Don't panic, that kind of stuff. Uh, they know their offense can score. It's, it's done it all year, <clears throat> except in the Valpo game. And they said the weather was so horrendous that, that was the reason. Well, weather's, if you're not scoring today, it's JU defense is the reason because the weather is spectacular for football. Gain of six on first down to Becker. RPO, big hole for DiFilippo, a first down and more. Into Jacksonville territory. Finally, Lewis wrestles him to the turf. He carries it all the way down to the Jacksonville 40-yard line. You know, he's a good ball handler. Uh, it's, it, I, I got lost on that one. I thought mm -hmm. the wide guy had it uh, at first. Uh, and that's got to be tough on the defense when somebody's a really good ball handler. And you don't usually think about that in terms of, uh, of your quarterback. But that quarterback who you're really not sure what he's doing makes a big difference. Becker on another short pass completion. A little low on the throw from Filippo, but he – Scoops it up for a pickup of six on first down. Second down and four. Hatters moving the ball for the first time this half down to the 34-yard line of Jacksonville, trailing 17-9 with four and a half to play in the third quarter. Another RPO, and DiFilippo keeps it breaking tackles down inside the 25. JU has tackled so well today. They didn't tackle well on that play. And, uh, again, uh, DiFilippo, had some options, decided to keep it himself in a big gain, uh, a good play. One reason he decided to keep it himself is the ball carrier that he might have handed off to was getting crushed at the mm -hmm. moment of the handoff, a potential handoff. Gain of nine and another first down. Stetson has mixed in some tempo here on this drive with success. Leary gets it this time, and he is wrapped up immediately. Joel Morris able to lasso him down, a gain of maybe one. And now it puts you probably back into a passing situation. They'll say he gained half a yard on the play. Clock rolling, 345 and counting to play in the third quarter. A 17-9 lead for Jacksonville. Have scored all 14 points here in the second half. Filippo on second and 10, looking to throw. Throws left side through the hands of the intended target. Jordan, who had space down the left sideline, and Filippo. A more accurate throw there, that's probably a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, it's not an easy throw, but the six-year senior quarterback got to make that throw because the guy was open and uh, that would have been a big throw. So that's just a bad throw. Third down and 10 for Stetson. We've documented their third down struggles in this game. Three of 10 on the afternoon. First you know, third down of this drive. You have to look at that last play as it worked. It just didn't get executed properly. They go back to it, and too tall for Becker this time on a skinny post at the five. What does Stetson do here? Fourth and ten. They've kicked a lot of field goals today, and it looks like the early indication is head coach Roger Hughes is tired of kicking field goals. Well, it, it would be uh, – what, what would be the length of the field goal? Well, the ball is at the 25-yard line. You're looking at about a 42-yarder. Yeah, and uh, it looks like uh, the Stetson kicker has the leg, but he's already missed one from about yeah. this distance, I think. He's got a 46-yarder under his belt this year, but he stays on the sideline. Offense on the field, going forward on fourth down, where they are one of one today. Fourth and ten, Filippo under pressure, uncorks it deep, and it is caught for a touchdown. A huge snag by Jeremiah Nails, his third touchdown of the year, and Stetson finally finds the end zone. Well, we just talked about Filippo making some bad throws. Uh, that was a really good throw. J.U. Gamble, they blitzed. And <clears throat> when you blitz, obviously, 
you leave possibly people open uh, deep. And although the coverage was decent, uh, Flippo got it off in time. But J.U. was bringing the house. They were hoping to really create some havoc there. And uh, I don't criticize the defensive call, but when it doesn't work, you often get burned. And uh, J.U. got burned. Offense staying on the field, looking to go for two to tie this game up at 17. Yeah, well, you got to. I mean, there's no reason not to go for two here. They uh, got four wide receivers and a back to the left of Di Filippo, motion man. Di Filippo throws back corner wide open. Draper hauls it in, and we are tied up. And Stetson has stolen old Uncle Mo back here late in the third quarter. Well, again. <clears throat> If I repeat myself too many times, just hit me. But it looks like two different teams have shown up in the second half. This this game looks nothing like what we saw in the first half. Uh, it, it's crazy. Uh, we've seen this before this year. That Maybe that's the Pioneer League. Uh, maybe it's just football. But uh, we've still got over three minutes to play in the third quarter. And uh, we have seen, what, three touchdowns? Three already. touchdowns already in this quarter after seeing just 12 points in the all, first half. All field goals. So uh, all of a sudden teams are making big plays. Uh, I, I thought I thought the defense, defense haven't been bad, uh, but some good execution has resulted in the points. So I'm going to give I'm going to give the offense the credit, not defense the blame for this third quarter play because it looks like guys have been covered in a really good pass or. They've just missed a tackle by a, a smidge a word. Smidge, yeah. Yeah, okay. Smidgen. Well, it's a smidge. Yeah. Just a little uh, bit. I'll allow it. <clears throat> it's a word I always use, but well, I heard somebody have an expression the other day, and a young producer said, I've never heard that expression. And I'm thinking, that's such a common expression. I, I couldn't comprehend that somebody 30 or under – and I, and I can't recall what the expression was right now, but it was like falling off a rock. You know, uh, Here's that kind of just very B.J. Bird has not had much luck in the return game today. Stetson with some really good work on the coverage units, and that gets special teams coordinator Kyle Faxlanger excited, jumping up and down on the Stetson sidelines, ready to greet his unit. But a flag dropped on that Jacksonville sideline late in the play. Well, hey, you wonder if that's not a personal foul when they get close to the uh, sideline where the benches are. A lot of yapping and going on and a little push and a shove here. But uh, we'll see in just a moment. Officials huddled up. Now we'll get our call. All right, unsportsmanlike conduct called on Stetson, charged to Bryson Richards, a reserve linebacker, and free 15 for Jacksonville. And what was going to be not very good field position turns into good field position because of the lapse in judgment, and perhaps Faxlanger wants to take back his histronics on the sidelines there as he'll probably greet. Well, you know, you get a tight ball game going, and, and then you have some play at sidelines where the benches are. Uh, it's not uncommon, but I have a hard time understanding it. I know the excitement of the game and the violence of the game, blah, blah, blah. Well, but these guys work words. so hard. You know, poise, you know, keeping your composure is such an important part of being a, a good athlete. That's part of it. When you get in competition, poise – Composure and all of those things uh, are important. May not be as important as speed. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you never. But they're important. Gain a two on first down for Jacksonville on the ground. Turner, he'll run it off left guard and takes a crack as he crosses the 40 yard line. Sets up a third down and manageable for Jacksonville around a third and three. The beauty of that play is, number one, it, it, a five-yard gain where he ran it is, is a good good run. But this is a distance for J.U. That should that, be relatively automatic. Right. They, they, they have options of, of Nicholas up the middle going wide. 
even turn or maybe throwing something short uh, out to the flat or even over the middle. So it really opens it up because of their running game. Most teams would have to throw it here, but I think JU has a full playbook. Turner bottled up, lost the football. And it looks like Jacksonville able to dive back on it. Cameron Gabers, Johnny on the spot for the Dolphins to keep JU in possession. No gain on the play, fourth and three. It was difficult to see, but I think that was a case of Turner fighting so hard to get the first down that one of his last twists, I think that ball got away from his body and uh, the defender managed to get it out of there. Hunter Stevens with the forced fumble. Stetson doesn't recover, but does get the ball back in a tie game with a chance to take the lead again. Derek Stump out to punt for the second time here in the half. Well, I'm sure the up man will be, at, will be told, if you take your eye off the football, we're going to come out there and and High snap for Stumpf, and he does get the punt away. Short kick fielded by Johnson, and Johnson is tackled after he crosses the 40 by Khalil Fleming. Stetson with pretty good field position. Its own 41-yard line to start on offense with 52 seconds to play in the third quarter, all tied at 17. A chance, great chance for the Hatters to retake the lead. Yeah, that was a, well, not a strange thing. There was a defender standing there, and I know you can't get within – what is the rule, one yard or two yards? Oh, they took the halo away, so it's okay. not even a matter of getting too close. It's just you can't make contact. Okay, well, it, well, he stood about two or three yards away and and then stepped forward when he caught the ball, and the returner was too quick and took off and went around him. But it's rare that you see the guy catch the ball with the defender literally standing there. I was a quite uh, – I didn't realize they had taken the halo away. Filippo completes to Jordan in the flat, and he received a wallop from Trey Minifield. And Trey Minifield's going back to the uh, huddle and saying, hey, when a guy's about to knock my block off, don't throw me the ball. <laughs> Gain a three through the air, a hard-earned three. 30 seconds left in the third quarter, probably time for one more play. Filippo in the gun on second and seven. Play action. Throws underneath, bobbled, and dropped. Would have been close to a first down. That time Jordan couldn't hang on. Stops the clock with 21 seconds left. Yeah, that is just, uh, that's flat out drop. There's no other way you can say it. Uh, Got to catch that ball 100 out of 100 times. He didn't. Was it a tad? Was it a little low from perfect? Yes. Got to catch it 100 out of 100 times. That's a throw, by the way, that normally is meant to be a little low because when you throw it over the middle, the last thing you want to do is get it up a little bit where he gets sale. tipped and yeah. does that kind of stuff. So normally it's uh, throw it low. If if you can't throw it perfect, make it low. Third and seven, Filippo tries to get it back to Becker, and a flag comes in. It was underthrown, but Becker couldn't get back to the football. C.J. Lewis, victim of putting his hands too much on the receiver. Well, I was blocked from the whole play by the Stetson bench standing right there. But again, I didn't see pass interference. The only thing I can imagine is that maybe the defender had hooked. Got a the little handsy, both of them kind of hand fighting down the field. It is that ball, which was trying to be a back shoulder. Right. And I think Filippo threw it even a little further to the back shoulder than he wanted to. And Becker kind of had his arm grabbed as he worked his way back. Well, but, you know, I don't mind the, you know, the hand fighting and all that. You know, it, it's football. Uh, I just, I, I think I've seen too many pass interference calls. First down at the 40-yard line and a run on first down. Really nowhere to go there. Kason Wakely taking a page out of K Calais Campbell's book hit, with that hit celebration. A home run. Yeah. Uh, make a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and then hit a home run. All right, we'll step aside when we come back. Fourth quarter in a great game between Jacksonville and Stetson. What more would you expect from these two rivals? 17 all after three here in Jacksonville. We are in Sunville. We look forward. Commit to progress. Shine together. Elevate student athletes to create a better world. Blaze the path. Challenge more. Enlighten and innovate. For no matter the height of our obstacles, they will never block the sun. We can. He's 
Students first. Rice. Connect. Impact. Every day. We are a Seinfeld. Playing a home game against Cleveland, I actually had an opportunity for a sack. Once I went to go wrap him up, his helmet kind of hit my pec just the right way, and, and, uh, and my pec tendon came off the bone. Following surgery, therapy was very extensive. It was done through JOI, and they did a great job of getting me back to the point where I can compete on Sundays. There was such a, a high level of trust. JOI did an outstanding job of taking care of me, getting me back to where I need to be. Without them, I don't know if that would be the case. JOI, where the pros go. JOI has been wonderful for me. Uh, going back to my playing days, they kept me on the field as a player. Uh, and since I have moved on to the next phase of my life, they have helped me lead a very active lifestyle. Uh, I got to go, go, go. And JOI, without them, I wouldn't be where I am. I mean, my left shoulder is money because of JOI. I'm going to go where the best is, and me, I'm going to JOI. JOI, where the pros go. We are a Sunbelt. We look forward. Commit to progress. Shine together. Elevate student athletes to create a better world. Blaze the fast. Challenge more. Enlighten and innovate. For no matter the height of our obstacles, they will never block the sun. We can. Be students first. Rise. Connect. Impact. Every day. We are a Sunbelt. Pretty obvious in real time. Back in Jacksonville, 17 all, and Stetson starting off the fourth quarter with the football, facing a second down and 10. 14 unanswered to start the second half for the Dolphins on offense. Stetson answers back with a touchdown and a two point conversion to tie it up on its last series. Here's second and 10. Quick slant. Jordan's got it. First down for Stetson. Well, Stetson's having to go to the air now. Scott, because one thing, you know, they, they ran for 113 yards and only 15 carries in the first half. But JU has stopped the running game pretty much in the third quarter. Uh, I'm looking here, and I think they got a total of, uh, uh, the, well, it shows that they got 41 yards, which isn't terrible, but they, they certainly have stopped them, slowed them down. Filippo, keeper off left end, carries down inside the 20-yard line to the 18, picks up eight on first down. That puts him over 100 yards running uh, for the day. Both both quarterbacks now, because Turner has 149 uh, yards on 19 carries, and DeFilippo has well over 100 on, that should have been his 11th carry. Stetson on the move and a chance to take the lead, but a penalty st stops this play before it starts. Ball start on Stetson, and an unforced error moves them back five yards. Their second, un, uh, their second false start in this half. We saw them play such a clean game in the first half. Only one personal foul penalty, but already two, two false starts. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure Roger Hughes is saying going crazy. Goes against the right guard, Avery Samuels, who's in because of injury in this game. Now four penalties for 40 yards on the Hatters today. Filippo back to throw, hit as he throws, and it's caught, working his way back to the football. Bensley Bornelis, and he nearly has a first down. That's a gain of about eight on the play, and Khalil Fleming rushing from his corner spot, rocked. De Filippo, right as he let go. Nice strength from the Stetson quarterback to muscle that one out there. Well, again, J.U. was blitzing. Give De Filippo, De, De Filippo credit. Uh, when the Dolphins have blitzed, he has often uh, managed to make some plays. One of them, a big touchdown throw. And a short run for Leary. Did he get enough for the first down? I don't think that it's, it's going to be close, but I don't think he made it. Well, yes, he did. They're indicating he got just enough. Stetson has converted a handful of those first downs by the skin of their teeth today. My streak continues because <laughs> as soon as I say it's red, <laughs> the announcer it's says it's black, yep. no, it's green. Uh, so just take everything I say and flip it around and you'll know you're right on. Clock eating drive for Stetson to open up the fourth quarter under 13 minutes to play in the ball game. Leary on a draw play pushes the pile down near the 10. They'll mark him down at the 12-yard line, a gain of five on first down. I'm surprised we haven't seen Stetson make, running right up the gut more often. 
JU's been burned by it much of the year, uh, but today they have been able to stop that uh, part of Stetson's uh, offense pretty decently. DiFilippo rolls to his left all sorts of time and then drops it off incomplete. Intended target on the play, Tony Gelati. Third down again for Stetson. Yeah, that could have been two 10-year-olds playing and completed that pass. Uh, they, were, they were only a few yards apart, but uh, he threw it in the ground and incompletion. Didn't have his feet underneath him there, and sometimes that ball just gets away from you. And it definitely wasn't his first, second, third, maybe even fourth option on that play. Good coverage down the field again by Jacksonville. Another third down for Stetson. Three of 11 on third downs today. Back to throw DiFilippo to the end zone and a miscommunication. Becker went in. DiFilippo went out with the throw. Fourth down for Stetson after the incompletion, and here comes the kicking unit to try and give the Hatters the lead back. I, I don't know who was at fault there, but I do know that had Becker stopped it and go back the other way, he, he'd have been wide open. Uh, so it, wrong route, wrong throw, I uh, don't know. But uh, JU's defense once again stops him from scoring with, within the red zone. 29-yard field goal try for Jonathan Messina, who is three for four today. High end over end kick, splits the uprights, and Stetson has retaken the lead with 12.08 to play in the fourth quarter. 20-17, to 17, Hatters on top. We'll be back after this. We are in Sunbelt. We look forward. Commit to progress. Shine together. Elevate student athletes to create a better world. Blaze the path. Challenge more. Enlighten and innovate. For no matter the height of our obstacles, they will never block the sun. We can. Be students first. Rise. Connect. Impact. Every day. We are a sun built. We're playing a home game against Cleveland. I actually had an opportunity for a sack. Once I went to go wrap him up, his helmet kind of hit my pec just the right way, and, and, uh, and my pec tendon came off the bone. Following surgery, therapy was very extensive. It was done through JOI, and they did a great job of getting me back to the point where I can compete on Sundays. There was such a, a high level of trust. JOI did an outstanding job of taking care of me, getting me back to where I need to be. Without them, I don't know if that would be the case. JOI, where the pros go. JOI has been wonderful for me. Uh, going back to my playing days, they kept me on the field as a player. Uh, and since I have moved on to the next phase of my life, they have helped me lead a very active lifestyle. Uh, I got to go, go, go. And JOI, without them, I wouldn't be where I am. I mean, my left shoulder is money because of JOI. I'm going to go where the best is, and me, I'm going to JOI. JOI, where the pros go. We are in Sunbelt. We look forward. Commit to progress. Shine together. Elevate student athletes to create a better world. Blaze the path. Challenge more. Enlighten and innovate. For no matter the height of our obstacles, they will never block the sun. We can. Be students first. Rise. Connect. Impact. Every day. We are a Sunbelt. Overcast, cool football weather to start the month of November here on the first coast of Florida. Two in-state rivals battling on this first Saturday in PFL action in the month of November. Scott Manzi, David Lamb back with you here as Stetson has just retaken the lead 20-17 to and what has been a tale of two halves, an offensively dominated second half after a defensively dominated first. Short kickoff, here's B.J. Bird on the return for Jacksonville, and he carries it out to the 30-yard line where the Dolphins start on offense, finding themselves trailing on the scoreboard again after what had been kind of a dominant performance to start the second half. Jacksonville has not had the ball yet here in the fourth quarter, but they'll have to put together another drive to try and retake the lead. What a fun game, though, what, and what a good, interesting game. See, I love this kind of football game. You don't know what to expect. All of a sudden, the team can't run. Then it goes 78 yards uh, for a touchdown. Defense is shutting down the other team every time it gets in the red zone, forcing field goals. And then, boom, uh, the other team goes and just, you know, uh, scores a touchdown with, with relative ease. 
it's just been fun back and forth. Big plays, tough plays. Uh, and I get the sense from up here, Scott, that there's been a lot of hitting out there. I mean, I, I've got to think there's going to be a lot of sore bodies because we've repeatedly seen ball carriers get caught, not quite down, and then somebody else comes in and just tees off on them. We've seen it on both sides all day. Just hard-nosed, aggressive football that's been fun. Gain of three on first down for Calvin Turner, Jr. A handoff on a dive play and a hard-earned couple more yards to the other side of the 35-yard line. That'll be about another two yards in Jacksonville facing a third down and around five. And there is a Stetson player who... Slow to get up. Yeah. And now Colantino Andrews back on his feet trying to stay in the game. And he does. Yeah, well, you can tell right now he's doubling over and bending. I'm a little surprised they didn't get somebody in for him. As slow as he was to get up, when he does stand up, he needs to bend over and stretch. Uh, let me watch him on this play. Third down and five to go for Jacksonville, who are – just one of ten on third downs today. Turner throwing off his back foot. Wide open man. B.J. Bird, nobody near him. Touchdown, Jacksonville. That, that was incredible. Stetson had, I don't know whether they had an all-out blitz, but they had a lot of pressure on him. Somehow, B.J. Bird gets forgotten, totally ignored, and... I don't know if that was like a, one of those scramble drills plays where the receiver breaks off his route to try and help the QB, but I think everybody got caught looking in the backfield, and next thing you know, Bird is – there's nobody within 20 yards of him. Yeah, and let's not, let's not forget that Calvin Turner sort of backpedaling through a ball about uh, 40, 45 yards. It's not easy to hit somebody from 45 yards, even if they're wide open. 64-yard pass completion on a third down, just the second conversion of the game for Jacksonville. And B.J. Bird has his first receiving touchdown as a Dolphin. Turner has now thrown four touchdown passes this year, his first of the game. He's got two TDs, one on the ground, one through the air, and this game has flipped right back to the other side, Jacksonville on top 24-20. I almost believe that, that Stetson was sort of, you know, bringing the blitz, bringing the house as they say, which left man-to-man -man coverage. And I almost of the belief that one of the coverage guys somehow thought he was one of the ones that was supposed to, to rush. Because you looked over here and there were two receivers and two uh, defensive uh, backs. And then B.J. Bird was on the other side of the field. Literally nobody within, what are we talking about, 20 yards of him? I mean, he's standing there somewhere around the 25, I think, uh, and there was certainly nobody between him and the goal line. There was no defender at, even at midfield. I kept uh, looking to see who was going to be near him, and yeah, there was I, no one. Yeah. So I just think he got lost. In the shuffle somehow. And in, in the defensive. And a short return on the short kick out to around the 31. And it's up to Stetson to try and reclaim some of the momentum after Jacksonville with another big play to retake the lead. 24-20 Jacksonville, 10-24 left in this one. A lot of time. Boy, yeah. who, who would have thought that these two offenses combined for just 12 points on nothing but field goals in the first half? Because we have seen a lot of touchdowns and some big plays here in the second half. Well, J.U., we've seen the eight, 74 and 64-yard touchdown plays. That's a pretty incredible. Uh, on, on that kickoff return, I'm looking for a yellow flag because, like I said, teams get mixed up together on the sidelines. And when it's in a tight ball game and there's been a lot of hitting, uh, tempers are often short. Leary trying the middle of the line of scrimmage, but he is dropped quickly. Kyrie Woods, the big man in the middle for Jacksonville. 6'1", 325, the junior college transfer from San Diego, California, with the tackle there after no game. I want to. I'm just glad I wasn't on the same flight with him, flying <laughs> from San Diego to Jacksonville, uh, and because I'm about his size, <laughs> that would be uncomfortable. Uh, De Filippo, long pass to the flat, nice catch and move made by Jeremiah Nails. Nails has a first down near midfield. Well, Scotty, think about the third person in the aisle. 
Oh my goodness, yes. If, if even if it was someone <laughs> as uh, as thin as you, still not comfortable. We'd have had you and said, "Hey, come here, son. Sit in the middle." <laughs> I've done that on some of these flights with these teams. I tell you that your your cheeks would almost be pooched out, your arms, uh, your elbows up under your your chin. <laughs> Eight of eighteen through the air. Leary on a first down run, hit and stuck by Wakely. Does carry the ball into Jacksonville territory. A gain of about three. Good defense by Wakely. You, you could put that on a tape recording and just hit the button, you know, about 10 or 15 times every game because he's going to make uh, those big kind of plays. Uh, y you know, Jalen has, has run the ball. Leary has run the ball okay at times today. But by and large, they've, they've sort of kept him in better check than I thought they would. Filippo scrambles his way up for a first down inside the 40-yard line. That's the guy they can't contain on the ground, and a lot of it has been on plays like that where they've had good pass coverage or whatever, and he just takes off and runs well. Down to the 38-yard line, a pickup of 10. Chains move, 846 and counting left here in the fourth quarter. Jacksonville leading by 4, 24-20. You know, I, I say Larry struggled. I mean, he's gained over 70 yards. It, 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 it just hasn't been chunk plays. It's right. Been, He's had a couple of uh, decent plays, and the rest of it, they contained it pretty well. But uh, both DeFilippo and, and Turner, the quarterbacks, well over 100 yards each. DeFilippo under pressure, and he is sacked. Joel Morris smothers him back at the 46. Second big play for Morris today, a guy who hasn't uh, made a whole lot of plays this year, uh, may have consistently been solid, but hasn't made the, you know, the big plays, the smash plays. Just made one then uh, with a quarterback who has been a dangerous runner on that type of play. Everything's breaking down. He's taking off just like Turner does often. Uh, but that time, uh, Morris made the play and a uh, huge play for the Dolphins who were clinging on to a four-point lead. Third sack of the year for Morris, a loss of eight. Second down at 18. Filippo down the seam. Wide open man, Nails, who is tackled immediately by Jeremiah Johnson at the 29-yard line sets up a third down and one. Uh, a big, a big, a big play there for Stetson and, and Johnson. I mean, nice tackle. Otherwise, it's a first down. But I think that's a case of you got to keep them in front of you because it's third, it's second, and so long. Well, you still can't give them that much cushion. Uh, and it turned out there was nobody underneath to uh, deflect a throw. Leary runs up the middle. He's got a first down and more. Leary to the 10 and into the end zone. And Stetson has reclaimed the lead. <laughs> what, what? Didn't you just say that he hadn't had a big run today? Yeah, well, uh, since early, uh, did it that time, and he did it right up the gut. Well, you know, if I say it, expect the, yeah, expect the, the opposite. You would think one of those coaches would be coming up here yeah. offering me a bribe. <laughs> but what, what a difference in one half and the other. I'm... I'm just shaking my head. You remember I told you, who would have been surprised if it had been 29-23 at the half? Well, you, well right, that, ha uh, right idea, wrong half. Right, that's about what it's going to be uh, uh, this half. Messina's point after is through. And now it's Stetson on top by a three-point margin, 27 24 with 7.06 to play after Jalen Leary's 29-yard rumble to the end zone. His seventh rushing touchdown of the year for the freshman back from Savannah, Georgia. You know, I don't know whether I'll explain this right or not, but depending upon who's ahead and who's behind, when you're a team that's behind, JU has a little bit of an edge because you're three points back. They can tie it with a field goal. Right. When Stetson falls behind based on the touchdowns flying, they wind up being four points down, and so they've got to score to catch up. So how much that factors into what these teams will do, uh, you know, JU uh, knows that if it if it gets another, if it gets a touchdown, it's got a little bit of a cushion. Same time, Stetson kicks a uh, they kick a field goal, they still lose to a touchdown, but it, it, it's a funny dynamic that I'll guarantee you, coaches are looking at all the possibilities. But who's thinking of field goals now? Yeah. I'm looking for the next 80-yard touchdown play. No doubt. Here's B.J. Bird. He scored the last touchdown for Jacksonville through the air. 
And he dances his way out to around the 30-yard line. And Jacksonville starts on offense again. Just under seven minutes to play. Sun peeking out here for the first time all day in Jacksonville. How many times this year have we said we're waiting for B.J. Bird to have the big play? And he's had a few, but is the 64-yarder his biggest play of the year? Biggest play of the year. Yeah, and, uh, and even though he's wide open, he is a dynamic athlete transfer from California. Not a big man, but can fly. And, uh, and Ian Shields got him because B.J. Bird's junior college coach and Ian Shields had a relationship in the past. Here's coaching. another big hole. This time it's Jordan Young Humphrey. A flag comes flying from the far side of the field. What in the world would he have seen? Well, well, there's a player down, maybe a block that led to that. But, yeah, the side judge way down the field throw, launches a flag away from the action. It was so far away that I'm watching the play on the far sideline. I don't see the flag thrown. I see a flag all of a sudden, you know, enter my vision. I mean, yeah, it flew through the air, didn't it? Yeah, he really threw it, by the way. Very good arm. Uh, not, I mean, let me guess here. He threw it almost 20, threw it in almost 20 yards. That's – Probably a long way to throw a flag. I know they've got a little weight on them, but uh, I don't know if it's that much of a weight. It's a blindside block personal foul on Jacksonville, and so the injured hatter, who I can't identify down there, may just have the wind knocked out of him from having been knocked out from behind. And he is slowly making his way off the field now, favoring that left arm. I understand what I'm about to say, Scott. I, I understand making the game safer and all that, and, and, and I'm not against it. But that play right there, it's those kind of plays that if you ask me to recite my memories of me playing football, those are the blocks that I'd want to – I'd be bragging about, mm -hmm. you know, huh? and, and, and some of the tackles. And that's true of most people. Uh, I heard him talking to some former Georgia player – this week for the Florida-Georgia game, and they were talking about a great play that he made, and they pointed out, by the way, you'd have been thrown out of the game for targeting now. So things change, uh, but and I'm not against the rules. 15-yard penalty was on B.J. Bird hitting Reggie Gant, and then offsides after the ball was moved down to the 15-yard line, moves it back up to the 20, so both teams trading penalties here. Jacksonville trying to approach the original line of scrimmage. This drive started at the 30-yard line, down to 6.39 to play and counting. Jacksonville trailing 27-24. Quick screen to the left side, B.J. Bird. He uses a stiff arm but can't get free of J.J. Henderson. A great open field tackle, and he stops Bird after just about a five-yard gain. All of a sudden, B.J. Bird is somebody we're talking about a lot. Uh, he, he is – one of those dynamic playmakers that you don't expect to be involved in many plays, but you're always expecting the big play. Uh, and now he's wide. He's way wide to the right. They've got man-to-man -man coverage out there, which I would think Calvin Turner would be excited about. He fakes the pitch and then works his way back to the right side. Juking past a handful of hatters and then knocked down, loses the football. Stetson has there got it. Well, we were talking about the, the JU has lived on that that edge where they can't afford to to make mistakes, uh, unforced mistakes, and certainly wait, no, they're ruling the f forward progress stopped, no fumble, and wow. Jacksonville retains possession. Well, it's no way for me to know whether that's true or not because the big pile, and you don't know, you can't hear the whistle. Uh, that is a huge call in the grand scheme of things. Oh, Jacksonville gains six yards on the play. It's third down and nine instead of Stetson Ball going in, leading by three. And, and we are now getting where the clock is a factor. Five Sorry. minutes to go. And Five minutes to go. Clock rolling. Jacksonville, this is probably four down territory. Turner drops back, and he is tackled from behind, well shy of the first down marker. Decision time for Jacksonville after a one-yard pickup. I would tend to, to punt here, and the only reason I wouldn't punt is my lack of confidence in my punters. Well, there's a defender down for Stetson, and this should 
stop the clock with 4.35 left. And that certainly helps. And it looks like Furman Reed is down for Stetson. 4.35 to play. Jacksonville, if they punt it back, do have all three timeouts. But they haven't managed to stop Stetson as of late. The Hatters have scored on each of the last three possessions. Well, you know, at some point, you your defense has played well for the most part. Don't you have to sort of put your faith in them and say, yeah. guys, you know, you stopped them inside the 20 and all during the first half. We need you to sort of suck that up one more time uh, because if we can punt to them, if you can stop them, then we'll get the ball back. We'll have the timeouts in our pocket, and then we'll have to make some plays offensively. And Lane putting absolutely no pressure on that right ankle as he's helped off the field. Yeah, that doesn't look well, and I I think he, it wasn't illegal, but somebody went down low. He got hit by one of his own guys. Yeah, and it, and it fell right on that part. Yep. And, uh, yep. So – Jacksonville does elect to punt with all three timeouts, putting the faith in the defense to get a stop here late in this one, trailing by three. I, I, don't, I don't think they had a choice here. Facing a fourth down and seven, not exactly a high percentage conversion down. Here is Stump and a high end over end punt. Hits at the 35, takes a JU roll all the way down inside the 20, down inside the 15, all the way to the 10-yard line. On a day in which punting has not been great for either side, that's easily the best one of the afternoon for both sides. Both, by far, and I'll tell you one thing Stump has, he doesn't kick it in the air very far. Every one of his punts kicks the right way for you know for him. It kicks away from him. Uh, I, I guess that's – you said that the really good punters, they can hold the ball a certain way and do all these things and make it go left, right. Whatever his natural way of holding it – that ball is kicking forward. Still a little luck. Oblong object out there. Right. It's a little <laughs> luck, but I'm saying, but every but one yes, of them. Yes, he is designing it that way. Every one of them today have done that. It's like a, you know, a good golf shot with a little release at the end of it, right? right. I, I don't even know if he's designed it or if that's just his natural way of, of punting. First down and 10 from the nine-yard line. We're starting field position of the day for Stetson, and they are content to keep it on the ground and try and run this clock as far – much as possible, a gain of two or three on first down. Yeah, this is a real dilemma for them now uh, because they can throw the ball, but if they'll run it, uh, either force JU to use the timeouts, but they can run it and, and, and basically just run that run the clock out uh, right now. So will they gamble to put it in the air? And it's a run pass option. DiFilippo keeps dives to the ground near the first down yard marker. Right about the 19-yard line is where he needed to get, and he has enough for a first. You remember a coach named Frank Howard? Long-time coach at, at Clemson. Yeah, yeah, I do. Howard's rock. And and right, and Frank Howard is, was one of the first to say, and he had talked like this. He said, you know, when you throw the ball, only three things can happen, and two of them ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine Stetson goes to the air anymore in this game. They picked up a first down. Jacksonville down to two timeouts. A handoff. Or th no, still actually have all three. The ball came out at the end of that play. Are they going to rule forward progress stopped in that one, or did Jacksonville come away with it? Well, Joel Morris out of the pile with the football for the Dolphins. Well, the officials. But here comes the officials in absolutely no hurry. Yeah, they're, they're just barely moving and – and another very important call. Well, there's no way they can call it, unfortunately, for J.U. now after all that time. Nope. They'll I rule mean, certainly that the forward progress was stopped again. So one close one goes the way of Jacksonville. The other close one goes the way of Stetson. And we're, again, probably even on the card. Yeah, I don't know whether that's a makeup call or not because it's hard to tell on the other one. But when they took that much time, there was no way then they could all of a sudden say, oh, yeah. Because you said Morris came up with the ball. So they saw that much earlier. Well, the both teams thought they had a takeaway, and neither of them get credit for it. Timeout called by Jacksonville. First timeout called in the second half. It's second and nine from Stetson's own 20-yard line, 2.57 to play. I'll tell you what, both coaches are really being put to the test. Uh, this is why they, 
get paid the big bucks, I guess. You know, JU's trying to manage these timeouts. Do we stop them now? Do we wait till we get the ball back so we really have them? But if we don't stop them now, the clock runs out. Meanwhile, your your Roger Hughes on the Stetson side, you know, I, I've got a good running game, but they're playing to stop the run. If we have to punt it back to them, you know, we're not putting the ball very well. They're all of a sudden making gigantic plays. All they need is a field goal. They got an extra field goal kicker to send it in overtime. So both coaches have to have dozens of things swirling around in their heads, trying to make decisions. And uh, we'll see who makes the right decision and maybe who makes this decision that he'd like to have back. Out of the timeout, second down and nine. DeFilippo looking to throw under pressure, just has to chuck it into his own bench. And an incompletion stops the clock without Jacksonville having to use another timeout. Here, this is my turn to say something that goes opposite. And I said I would be shocked if Stetson goes to the air anymore on this drive. And sure enough, they do, and it backfires. Well, you know, if, if DeFilippo had had just a little bit more time, Nails was wide open. Nobody was covering him. He was wide open at midfield, and if Filippo had seen him or had just another moment, uh, and he, he he could have thrown the ball almost up in the air, and Nails could have circled back and circled under to make the catch. Uh, I don't know whether he just got away. I don't know how he got so wide open, but he was wide open. Maybe the play of the game right here. DeFilippo gets free. Still running, but he stopped shy of a first down. Looked like he was going to be sacked. But Ethan Hall able to stop him, shy of a first down. He gains about three or four. It's fourth down, and Stetson forced to punt. Jacksonville calls a timeout. It's second timeout to stop the clock with 2.42 left in the fourth. The Jack Dolphins Jackson will get the ball back. Yeah, Jacksonville defense is much maligned this year, but they have really made some, some marvelous plays today. Uh, we're talking about them stopping Stetson three times in the red zone in the first half forcing field goals every time, and then really stepping up here uh, when you know they had to be a little bit nervous. This Stetson offense is the leading scorer in the, in the Pioneer League. Uh, they've got some playmakers that have got some big numbers on the board, and yet it stepped up, and it's going to force, force a fourth down. Now Stetson's defense gets the test. Yeah, and what can what what can they hold up? Can this Jacksonville offense, which has been big play uh, centric, really in this game, David, put together maybe a drive if they have to right. to win the game? Only two forty two left right now. A couple more seconds will come off on this punt, and so Jacksonville have to be efficient. Oh yeah, Jacksonville can't. Uh, you know, th th well they take some chances maybe, but they need to be efficient. Is the right word to use? They they've got to methodically get it down the field, and if something pops, it pops, and that would be great. Uh, but they've got to be careful. A, a good punt. Here's Bird at the 35. Bird still on his feet, bouncing it toward his own sideline. Bird with a long run for about seven yards or so on that return. Jacksonville starts on offense at its own 42, 2.27 left. Dolphins in search are their first win in the A Sun or the PFL, excuse me, this year. Stetson trying to avoid back to back losses for the first time this season. Okay, you know, great field position. You got the ball on the forty two yard line. It's it's two and a half minutes to go. And I'm trying to see how many timeouts JU has left. They, Down to one. They've got one timeout left. I think they've got the full arsenal right now. Run or throw. Uh at, at least it, for the, this series they do. Turner out into the flat, caught by Young Humphrey, and he's got enough for a first down into Stetson territory, a pickup of 11 through the air on first down. One real advantage in college football when you're driving late like this against the clock is the clock stops on first downs. So that's, that, that's an advantage that college mm -hmm. offenses have on these situations. But a nice play there. Stetson's defense that time was sort of playing that, you know, bend but don't break, keep them in front of you. But they can't afford to do that uh, too much. Turner pitches Riley to the sideline and steps out of bounds to stop the clock after a short pickup. 
He carries it down to the 44-yard line, a pickup of three on first down. When they tried to go to him earlier in the ballgame, they didn't get many good results. Uh, but that time, maybe the emphasis is right now, what do you got to put your emphasis on? Don't let Curtis Turner turn the corner and break one. And you've got to respect Nicholas, uh, you know, he's had the big run up the middle. You may have stopped him most of the game, but he's a quality football player. And you've got to protect yourself against B.J. Bird. So that lets some other players out, gives them some room. Turner throws, completes to the sideline. Mitch Bailey's first catch of the day for Jacksonville. And another first down, down to the 35-yard line. Well, this is what you want to do if you're J.U. You've got a timeout in your pocket. Methodically move the football. Just keep making big chunk plays. Turner will run it himself up the middle, stumbles, keeps his feet, and then speeds into his own sideline to get out of bounds to stop the clock. He picks up a couple on the play, but, boy, if he had gained maybe one right up the middle and been tackled inbounds, Jacksonville would have definitely had to use that final timeout, but instead they keep it after a short pickup. Yeah, that's the biggest thing Stetson's defense sort of has in their back pocket is you figure JU's not going to run it up the middle. Right, uh, pretty much everything's right. got to go to the edges right now. But but it's also a good time, by the way. Some some coaches would say that's a great time to run it up the middle Jackson, when, when they don't expect it. Jacksonville's target yard line about the 25 to get in to field goal range for Zach Benwick to try and tie this thing. Turner looking to throw, quick throw, and it's broken up. A Ooh. diving breakup, Henderson, he's been active today. He has. And he nearly got far enough in front of that one to pick it off. I mean, another step, and that would have been a pick six. And that's probably the biggest reason why, in your heart, you don't want Turner throwing the ball because he's not an accomplished thrower, passer. Uh, improved, yes. Accomplished, no. And, uh, boy, the, if you're Stetson, you've got to still be – your heart's beating fast. That was so close. Like I said, one step. Stats and sideline fired up. Third down and six. Turner running the option. Turner nowhere to go, and he is dropped for a loss. You know, Inbounds. Clock still running. Does Jacksonville use a timeout here, or did he actually get out? The clock has stopped. You know, I, I try not to be hard on, on any of the players, but isn't that another example of Turner's inexperience as a passer? Now that was that would have been tough. He's fighting like yeah, hell. It's not a passing play, get. but at some point you figure just throw right. it away. But but a veteran quarterback might have had the thought that even just before you go out of bounds, just get rid of it. You, I mean, you, you only have to throw it what two yards and it's out of bounds. Right. Just get rid of it, and because it may have knocked him out of field goal range. Timeout called by Jacksonville. Use their final time out here to talk over this fourth down play. And, yeah, they are uh, – I don't know if they call out Benwick or not here. The ball is at the 36-yard line. From here, it's about you're talking about a 52, 53-yard field goal. I think he has the leg. Uh, I want to say he kicked one earlier that looked like he was kicking it out of the county. Uh, but, boy – Here's what it comes down to, Scott. 53-yard field goal try or fourth and ten try. Here we go. They're going to call on the freshman Benwick All right, well, to try it from 53 right hash mark to tie the game with a minute 26 left. Well, which one do you think they have the greater odds in making this? Are you making fourth and ten? They're going with ben Benwick. He has been a wonderful kicker this year. Good snap, good hold, low line drive kick, and it's just too low, no good. He knew he had to drive it, and he cleared the line, but he missed it short by a yard, maybe two. I think, yeah, it was a case of he knows that the ball's got, he's got to, you know, he said drive. He's got to be a little bit higher on the football uh, and just got a smidge too high, I guess. And to go back to that third down play, if Jacksonville doesn't lose four yards on the play, that might have been that might have been good. Yeah. And but, that that that's tough. Yeah, that 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 was tough. And again, Turner was a cornerback as a freshman, and in high school in Savannah, he was strictly a running quarterback. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. David, I think you hit the nail on the head in the fact that like he has playmakers so ingrained into his psyche right. that he just doesn't quit on plays. Like He just wants to make a play, and you respect that. You love it, but at the same time, sometimes as a coach, you're sitting there going, just live to see another one here. Just let us, right. let us have this. He's got the playmaking so ingrained as an athlete. He doesn't think necessarily like a quarterback. And, you know, again, somebody thinking like a quarterback flips it away. And now you've got fourth and six or five or a 30, you know, a 42-yard field goal or something. Yeah, it, it would have been 49 right. if, okay, if still he doesn't a long lose. Field goal. Still long, but, but fourth like and we saw 53 probably dropped two yards short. Right. So. But fourth and five. Yeah, and then you have the option to go for it as is, well. It's a, hell of a, lot, a heck of a lot different than, than fourth and nine or ten. And instead, Stetson kneeling it out will emerge victorious in what was an exciting back-and-forth affair here. Another close one comes down to the wire. Last year, Stetson hits a field goal at the buzzer to win it. This year, Jacksonville's game-tying try with under a minute and a half left falls just short, and Stetson wins a second in a row in this rivalry. And the Hatters prevail 27-24, your final today. With the win, Stetson improves to 6-2 and two on the season, now 3-2 and two in the Pioneer Football League. The Hatters next up return home to host San Diego next Saturday. Jacksonville, another tough luck loss, and the Dolphins fall to 2-7 and seven on the season, 0-5 oh in the PFL. I haven't said this very often, but I'm sorry to see either team lose. It was a B it was a dandy, and they yeah. played hard, played well for yeah. the most part. Yeah, you you want to see both teams win, but that's not possible. And congratulations to Stetson, a heartbreaker for JU. For my broadcast partner David Lamb, I'm Scott Manzi, saying so long from DB Milney Field here in Jacksonville. Your final score: Stetson 27, Jacksonville 24. For our entire broadcast crew, so long from Jacksonville University.